It's time to reflect and reset for an epic 2022. Today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. This is the Wandering But Not Lost WBNL podcast where real estate and reality meet. And now your hosts, Jan O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 196 and you can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jan O'Brien, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I'm feeling really good about 2022 already, Matt. I don't know about you. Absolutely. Do you feel good? Do you feel like I, this is our I, year? I do. <laughs> <laughs> I have never heard that before. <laughs> I don't know. Some of about every year can be your year. Every year is your year. That's awesome. Well, I'm really ready for this year, and, and that's why I'm jazzed to talk about this. I have really been doing some deep dive, uh, and I'm going to share today the reflection I've been doing and the, and, the, and some things I've been doing to really get focused for the new year. And I just, I felt like it's things that I'm always coaching that we're always talking about at WBNL coaching. I'm actually doing it and I'm coming up with this theme again and again and again, and I'm going to stick with it of, for me, it's important. Less is more and choosing quality things to do, realizing there's only so much time in the day choosing things that you want to do that are fun and, and getting up every day and with purpose and passion because you're not overwhelmed. All right. Easier said than done, but that's where I'm, I'm, how I'm kicking off my year. I'm being intentional in my year, kicking off the year and getting super focused on the activities that are the highest and best for me. Love what you do, that's what you got to do, right? We've been talking about loving what you do for the longest time. And it looks like everyone in America is now on that page. <laughs> exactly. And you look at the workforce. If it's not fun, don't do it. Exactly. <laughs> Go do something else. There's choices. There All are right? choices. So. That's a, that's the important part. All right, you ready to dive in? Let's do it. Go. All right, our focus on today's podcast is two parts: reflecting and then resetting, so that you can have an epic 2022. All right, Matt, I want to talk about reflecting on your 2021 so that you can have this epic 2022. We can't really jump into planning and all that unless you really, in my opinion, take a look back before you go forward. Do you agree? I do agree 100%. Cool. So let's talk about something we always talk about at WBNL Coaching, and I do every year, and it is to reflect and we have a couple of questions for you that will help you. Now, you don't have to spend a ton of time on this. However, don't skip this part. Right. So it starts with what did you accomplish in 2021? Did you accomplish your goals? Did you have goals and did you accomplish them? What happened personally and professionally? Just stop. And I honestly recommend carving out. This is what I've been working on. I carved some time out. I found a, I have my little place. I have a couple places in my new apartment, my new condo where I have, uh, I move for, to a couple different places where I can feel like I'm in the zone of, of getting away from the computer. And I did that and started jotting down and I used a couple things. Um, my beautiful business plan that we have had for years, you know, did I, how did I do on the numbers of transactions that I said I was going to do? And honestly, I did more than I thought I was going to do because I really only started committing to the real estate business full time uh, for me as a primary focus for income uh, in September. Right. That's right. Last so quarter. It started with that. But then I also can use you also can use as a tool your calendar, um, you know, maybe even your social media. I don't post as much as I used to on social media. And the, I, that's one thing I recognize that I'm kind of OK with that. I don't, I post some personal things because I'm really using Facebook for family, but I'm not really into social media anymore. I, you know? I'll yeah, I do know. I'm not either. It's, it's uh, going from posting every single day for years to posting hardly ever is uh, kind of freeing. <laughs> well, Instagram and all that, because really I'm 100% and we are at WBNL Coaching focused on you, video, YouTube video. So celebrate your wins and successes. What worked well for you? These are the couple questions to get you thinking. Did you get off track anywhere and why? Analyze why did you get off track? What happened? Did you just get into a funk? Did you just decide whatever, you know, another year or two of a pandemic? What, what was it? And then what did you learn? I really feel like we always learn. We talked a little bit about that in, in, in previous videos and about, um, 
you know, recapping what happened in the year and, you know, what have been the themes and, you know, there's a lot of learning we've had. We've had a lot of time to, to kind of be by ourselves in the last two years for the most part compared, comparatively speaking, you know, don't you think so? It, Not going out as much for the most of us, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think the pandemic did a, a big 180 for a lot of people and what they did in their lives and how they really conducted everything they did. So there was a lot more time for reflection and, and uh, you know, downtime to, to to reflect if you actually if you actually did, you know, took the right. time to actually do it. In the, in so, the, so it's the pros and the cons, right? What what worked well, what didn't work well. And you start with that. All right. And, and then you know, so I think it's important. I, I kind of was going through this this year, this uh, in the last week after the new year. It has been so beautiful here in Southern California because we had such a rain. December and um, the snow on the mountains that oh. is incredible. And it has been so clear the last week. I've done, I've gone on quite a few hikes and just thinking about things. And, you know, there's some things that happened for me last year that were not the most positive, but you know what, that isn't, it's not, it's okay. You know what I mean? Those negative things in your life are not, don't have to bring you down forever. Right. No, there's can, lessons in that. That's the they point. Are, of and it's, there's uh, in everything and it's so mm -hmm. interesting you, but you have to be on top of it and you have to keep pushing yourself to the positive side but reflection is uh the way absolutely the way to get started so just go do that part first okay now the next part of reflection is to this is the business side this is the real estate coach coming out here to say there are five key areas in my humble opinion that are important in your business. Okay. And they're, and we've got them, these five, and I'm going to give you some ideas around it. So number one is your brand and your online presence. Now we have done a lot of talking about this at WBNL coaching. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll dive into more of those in a second. So let me just go through all five of them and then we'll, we'll dig, we'll dive in. So your brand and your online presence, which is also your client reviews and so forth, then time management. And I wanted to basically say here, time management, your schedule, and this, how important it is to be doing daily legion and conversion, some kind of business building. Okay. So I want you to assess yourself uh, in each of these five areas. And number three is your referral and how you're nurturing your database. Number four is what are your other lead pillars beyond sphere of influence in, in your database? Got to have clear identity around that. And then your overall business system, which is of course, yes, it's very encompassing, but it's your business systems, your checklist. All right. So let's look at each of them individually give you a few other ideas here as your as part of this reflection exercise for 2021. So you can have an epic 2022 and not repeat your mistakes, learn from them and get refocused. So number one, brand refresh, online profiles, get client reviews now. It's that simple, okay? Now, Matt created this brilliant brand refresh guide for you and it's a checklist and there's a video that we you can check the we'll have the link to the video for that matt went over all of this and honestly you you dive in here and then i'm just going to talk a little bit about reviews and, and share a story about how it really works if you do it but let's just talk a little bit about what do we mean by their brand and now's the time to do it right we, we talked about it earlier but if you haven't gotten to it yet go do it because you're going yeah. into a new year and it needs to look good moving forward as with everything, it's good to go back and assess just exactly kind of the state of your, it's like the state of the union, right? State of your business and, and what everything looks like and whatever, what, you know, where you are either online and in the print world as well. So go back and see where, what, what your brand looks like across all the platforms. Chances are you'll probably find a couple of things that you haven't updated over the years or in the last year, if you've switched anything. So it's just a way to make sure that you can have consistency across your entire brand. And I'm not suggesting you go back and rebrand your entire self, but you know what? Maybe a little boost here and there on something might be kind of nice. You know, if you have not changed your social media headers um, or your, uh, you know, your covers in a while, maybe it's time to go in and kind of update those across what all. What about your, your profile photo? Uh, yeah, <laughs> and, and perhaps I dare yeah, say. Yeah. I dare say many of you are uh, using pictures that are a little bit outdated. So that would be a great way to do that as well. Love it. So just go in and do an assessment of your brand. And this checklist actually will help you go through to identify the things that you might have forgotten that are out there. Because like I said, a lot of people think about online uh, first and you should, because that's where people are finding you for the most part. But you have a whole lot of print media that you probably don't even think you have. So go back and look at that, especially if you change companies in the last year, because there will be things that have the wrong brand on them, I guarantee you, as you go oh, through yeah. stuff. 
So I'm take a look at that. that. Take take a look at that. Absolutely, right now. Um, somebody, some David Squire called me and said, "Jen, your old company is over on this thing." I'm like, yeah. Yeah, it's good, "Great, great advice." And your online profiles include, you know, when you Google your name, what comes up, and it's generally Zillow, Realtor.com, LinkedIn, maybe your Facebook, wherever you are online. Give it a refresh. And I just want to, once again, until I'm blue in the face, client reviews. You know, I'm getting yeah. new. I'm new over here. I'm not even in my first full year of real estate here. And I've already got like seven reviews. Okay. Because I follow the process that we teach. Talking to people about how important reviews are, learning where they are, um, reminding them that I'm going to ask for it. First of all, obviously providing great customer service and, you know, five-star experience and going the extra mile and doing all these things. And then I was very happy to report. I'm down to one person that I closed with in the last two weeks that's getting to the review. Everyone else has done the reviews. And it's awesome, it's such a good feeling because it's on wherever they are. I have now one on realtor.com, one on Zillow, and a whole bunch of them on Google, that's where I want them to be. But I can take the review and I can put them on my website, I can use them in my marketing. All right. So this is amazing to me how many people procrastinate about this, Matt. I've had three coaching sessions in the last week or so. And I'm like, how are you doing on your reviews? Oh, yeah, I need to work on that. No, you know, you got to make it happen. It's part of your checklist. It's the, one of the last things that you do when you close a transaction. It's funny because we talk about it all the time. We've been talking about it for years, you know, and, you know, to your point earlier, when you talked about how you have really just really started back up in the last four months, getting your this business that you have right now in Florida going, uh, it is absolutely a part of your routine. And if you do it, they will come. I mean, most people don't get seven reviews in their whole career, right? Because they don't ask for them. So if it's a part of your business and you make it, you know, it's just as important as freaking getting that contract signed. It's powerful. <laughs> and you'll it'll start generating business for you, but it all ties into everything that you're doing. So that's, right. that's branding and online presence. The next important focus area, and this is just really helping everybody and it's helping me I'm, I'm sharing with you the things i realized i needed to focus on and this is why i'm i'm sharing with these ideas with you about what i'm doing but it's also the common themes in anybody that i'm coaching or working with and this next one is literally not managing your schedule not having a schedule allowing it to be all over the place and it's just making a commitment to discipline self-discipline this year so in the time management let's call it your perfect week your schedule there are certain things that need to be in there. And honestly, I believe it starts with time off. Can't work seven days a week. I'm really having to work on this one here uh, myself because, you know, when you're getting things going, you're like, you don't want to turn anything off, but you can, I don't want to burn myself out. So yep. I want to schedule some vacations, some maybe staycations, and at least taking a day off each week. Put that in your calendar doing a morning practice, a morning routine. I'm very happy to report. I've been doing that every day. Love that. And I am super jazzed about that. And it, it, it needs to really honestly go into the calendar. I don't actually have that on my schedule. I'm going to start putting that on my schedule. Then one to two hours of some type of lead gen has to happen. If it's an open house, if it's following up with leads and then time to work on your business. That's what I mean by a disciplined schedule. And then everything else, which is all the things that you're doing all the time, happen in between that if you can focus on those four areas time off morning routine uh one to two you know intentional legion and business building and then a time to, a block of time here or there to work on your business systems then make that your priority and then all the other stuff that takes up 90 percent of your time is all the putting the deals together and handling problems and so forth but most of us i was falling into this routine too spend all day just handling all those problems. And then it's very easy to say, well, I'll lead generate tomorrow. Okay. So I really have been talking about this forever and now I'm experiencing it and I know I have to readjust and be disciplined. So that's it. Okay. There you go. Time management, your perfect schedule, even though there is no such thing in real estate as a perfect schedule, make it happen. All right. The next one is referrals in your database, right? This is what everyone tells me. This is where all my business comes from, Jan, is mm -hmm. my referrals and my, you know, I get referrals and I get stuff even though I don't even do anything. So imagine if you were just intentional. And again, with the concept and the theme of less is more quality content, quality connections, right? Then I'm recommending 
a monthly newsletter. I don't know how many times we're going to say huh. a monthly newsletter that is hyper local, that has a market update in it, has other things that are in it. Go back. We've done a video on this. You can go see. We did a whole video on what should go in that monthly newsletter. I, th I think Matt and I actually demonstrated how to create a monthly We newsletter. did. We did. We built the whole, we, we showed you how to we build, build it. Yeah. Yeah. I really am uh, super focused about this. I'm trying to decide, and I got to not overanalyze this if I'm going to switch to a different CRM. This is a decision I'm making right now because I want to be able to text. Uh, yeah. Not everybody gets. Here's what I found about emails. You got to do emails, but a lot of email goes to spam. So I'm trying MailChimp and your CRM. So I don't know what the solution is. I just know that you've got to do it. But then you have to have an alternative way to text your people to say, hey, did you get my newsletter? If not, here it is. And that MailChimp has a way that you could do that because the archives are always there. So I'm trying to decide what to do with that. You can also put your newsletter up on your website as an example. So get that down and just know that you're going to do a newsletter every month where you're talking about a local business. I just discovered where I'm going to get my hair done. It's a 20 year business in Dunedin. And I told the lady, would you like to be my first local business spotlight? She was a little bit scared of the video part. I'm like, we're sure. going to go do it. All right. Uh, the other thing, connect with people on their birthdays and do the home anniversary connection. Like right now, I was just talking to a client saying, go back and do, how many times have we talked about this one, Matt, in the last year? Do an analysis for the people that own a home and let them know how much equity they gained in the last year. Have you done that yet? That's something that's powerful, valuable, and will probably generate some business, a referral or more. By doing well, and in January, we always talk about sending out their closing statements, right? From if they closed last yes. year, do the touch base. There you go. There's another one. And then whatever you're going to do for a client appreciation event, that's it for your referrals in your database, making some meaningful connections. Honestly, you don't have to do a 10 million things. Just do those three things we just right. talked about. And then identify beyond your database, what are two, maybe one, two, no more than three other lead pillars. And by lead pillars, I mean specific tactics, an area that you're going to focus on. It could be open houses. It could be, it could be um, doing some kind of something on social media. For me, it's going to be YouTube. And it's the area very, very, then each of whatever that's that thing you select is, then you have tactics around it. Now I'm still going to do open houses as part of my listing marketing plan, because I think that if I focus on doing video database, doing some listing marketing, uh, and my, my um, you know, YouTube uh, as my primary marketing thing, then I'm being very intentional with the kind of videos that I'm putting up. And then around listings, I can do just lists is just sold. And I have identified two areas that I want to consistently do video and maybe do some mailers to. That's it. Right, Matt? You, I've talked to you about this. I'm not going to try to do FISBOs and expires and go over here and then get, get you know, like, oh, here's the next new thing to do. Less could be more quality connections and make sure there's value in it to the consumer, to your target. So that I think is so freed me up to know I'm every, I get up. It's like, is this helping me in my, my, my key pillars, That's creating right. video, you know, stay in touch with my database and doing that lead follow up. And then the lead follow up happens because whatever it is you're doing, there's always somebody for you to talk to. There's always somebody in your database. It might be time to get to send a birthday out or whatever. Right. So it, it fits into that routine. And then the last one for reflection. Well, actually, is, there's, a, there's a resource in here. For oh, yeah, right on. Exactly. Oh, yeah, um, we have another checklist. That's right. Hello. Yeah. I'm using that right now. I'm very happy about it. Right? Yeah. The Epic checklist is awesome. I think it's a 13 or 14 page checklist that just goes through everything that you need to touch in your business. Actually, there's another resource that we talked about just a little bit ago about. We have a uh, another checklist, an Agent Perfect Week uh, document as well. Oh, that's right. Um, we that got you can so go many in things. and uh, take, a, take a look at to, uh, you know, to plan your time management. Just go to freebies on WBNL Coaching. There's something over there, many things over there for you. For everything. But that Epic checklist breaks down into these business systems. A great segue into this final one. Right. And your, and your business systems really include, obviously, if you haven't done it already, what are your goals in all areas of your life? What is your business plan? Did you do the business plan? And then I'm keeping it super simple right now. What's your referral system? I just talked about like the three or four things that you could do. And this is the other two. The next two are the ones I'm working on right now. I'm finalizing. I've been working on it since last September. Uh, your seller before, during, and after systems. And the same thing for your buyers, meaning... How can you template? How can you create checklists around? So all, all those those uh, repetitive tasks that you're doing all the time to when you work with a seller or a buyer, 
is giving you more time. It gives you, it frees up time if you try to get it out of your head and stop trying is what I'm trying to say here. How many more tries can I fit into a sentence? <laughs> I'll try one more. So this is what the average agent does. It's all up in the head and things get dropped. So it, my commitment is finalizing my checklist and my systems so that I can go and not have to worry about did I remember everything. I just simply go and say, okay, what's next? What's yeah. next in the, in the process? And then I've built a bunch of templates out now that go out that are the, the things I send all the time, like congratulations, we're an escrow and uh, here's what you need. Here's some moving uh, tips and here's all the utility information. You know, you know the things that you need to do that you do all the time anyway, you know, cause this is the thing that I, and, and working with people again, with clients again, I was, I've recognized that you can do a great consultation in the beginning and a presentation, but people only retain 10, 15% of what you say to them. That's just the way it is. So, it's a combination of a great presentation, great communication, and ways that you can continue to show that you're always educating and informing and you're on top of everything is when you have these systems in place, like a template that says, okay, here's how you get the homestead exemption. Congratulations. And here's everything you need to do. I took the time. I had, I did it like three times and, and I finally went, this is a template. So now I go pull the template. It takes me 30 seconds to personalize it. Right. And off it goes and everybody appreciates that. So that's what I mean by before, during, and after. And then just around those lead pillars, what specifically are you doing tactic wise for marketing and lead generation, including like what you do for listing marketing, which will generate you some more business. Okay. So that is reflecting. And that brings us to a couple more, a free resource. And then they, our main course, right? So we do have agent fundamentals and business planning course. This is literally module one of our real estate sales builder program, completely free, has our whole business planning uh, lessons in there, all of our downloads and templates, everything you need to have a great goal setting, uh, write your goals and do a business plan for 2022. But we also have a lot of great things in that first module that are all about um, setting up these great you know, setting up your habits for success, really. Right. Whether you're new or seasoned agent. And then, of course, our real estate sales builder is the fundamental course that we have. I mean, 12 modules, 119 video lessons, over 110 documents are in there. Crazy. 110 documents. Yep. All right. And where can everybody get that, Matt? You just go over to WBLcoaching.com and um, click on courses and you will be able to jump on in there and grab the course. Um, uh, that one and the mini course, mini courses and freebies on the website. So wbnowcoaching.com. All right, it is time to reset and refocus for an epic 2022. So what's the very first tactic, the very first tip I wanna share with you? And it's to identify three key things. It's called start, stop, and continue. What are you committed to starting? Now, what does that mean? You know what that means. It's something that you keep on saying you're going to do and you never do it. <laughs> Procrastinators. So for Jan, the start is, <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say it. Oh, boy. The morning routine that I swear by and I know I love it. And uh, since the beginning of the year, I've been doing I identify what my routine is. I don't, I'm not so rigid in my thinking that it has to be five things. It's just taking to me. I've defined again, less is more simplifying things is my theme. One of my themes this year, starting something and being disciplined with it is to, it just simply means that I'm not jumping out of bed in the morning and jumping right into uh, work. I am doing something for myself to get my mind right or to my body right. So that could be meditating. It's been walking for me on uh, my gym. I finally got my pass to go over to this gym of where I work. So it's whatever it is. It's some activity that's between 30 and minutes and an hour first thing in the morning. That's my start. You got to start, Matt. I, it's you just getting, it's, I think getting back into the routine. See, I, I, I'm married. Well, to is a, that a continue? You're a walker. So is that a yeah, continue? I, I, I'm married to a school teacher. So that has three weeks off around the holidays. And I have a hard time when she's home doing my normal stuff. Um, so for me, it's to get back into the routine, right? It's to get, it's to continue a lot of the stuff I'm already doing, but it's to get All back right. into it. So. All right. Stop okay. is anything that you want to not do that's not working. Now, I want you to look at these personally and professionally. Is there something that you need to start? 
and then stop or stop, like stop doing like, you know, it's not good for you or it's like it's been helping you procrastinate or whatever it is. Identify something personally and professionally. Um, and for me on the stop, it's winding down at the end of the day and disconnecting, you know, um, I am going to stop, you know, continually looking on my phone or doing all those things because I realized the importance of sleep and I've been changing my patterns a little bit um, so that I could un unwind a little bit better and get a better night's sleep. Okay. So it's, it's disconnecting and then continue is what are you doing? Well, that's working for you and keep doing it. Right. So start, stop, continue in each area, personal and professional. And then commit to 2022. If, to, to, if you're going to commit to 2022 being your best year ever, what I say every year, it's going to be my best year ever. I have to say it's about taking action daily. And I just mean small steps forward yeah. and consistently doing it. And I'll do a shout out to Darren Daly, Dar Darren Hardy. I listen to his Darren Daly a little quick podcast when I'm walking, actually, it's, it's very motivational. And then I listen to some other things, the compound effect, that book, it's brilliant. It's because it's basically saying, just do one simple thing all the time, consistently over time. And you'll get these huge results compared to the person who, you know, does the crash dieting or yeah. I'm going to go do this. And then they're over here. And then, you know, if we just line two people up, that book is filled with examples of tortoise versus the hare line two people up and the person who's consistently doing something that is going, it makes the biggest gain in the, in over time. Um, love it. Absolutely love it. And, and I, and for me, it's a work in progress because I have this, I have this tendency to, to keep on taking things on and doing more things. And I have yep. to keep reminding myself to stop. That's another thing. Stop, you know, onto something new. It's choose the things that are fun that I'm enjoying and be consistent with it. It doesn't have to be massive. You know, it's funny. Yesterday, I uh, I always I wake up at, kind of in the middle of the night, and I, there's some stuff I always have to do. And I was going back to bed because I usually will go back to bed for a couple hours, and then that's like the end of my you know my horrible sleep pattern. Don't don't ever get into the pattern that I'm in. But I went back to bed the other night, and I I had all of a sudden my mind was flooded with about five or six things that needed to get done. Right. Or things that I've been kind of putting off over the holidays. And now, you know, you have no excuse anymore. Mm -hmm. And I could not go back to sleep. So I and it was I woke, I got up and I was like, I had anxiety. It was like, what the heck is happening here? So I said to my I wrote them all down, first of all, uh, because I didn't have them all in where they needed to be to where I could actually check them off of a list. Wrote them all down and said to myself, OK, which one are you going to do right now today? Right now, at six o'clock in the morning on Monday or Thursday, whatever day it was, what are you going to do? I did it. I checked it off the list. I felt better about that. And instead of going in and trying to tackle everything, I said, okay, you know what? We're going to do that one tomorrow. You're done for the day. You did your thing for today and you're good. You're going to get these next things done in the next week. Right. And I felt so much better just by doing that one thing. So small steps are so important. To start now, I, thank you for saying that because you just summed up what was happening for me like a month or so ago where I was feeling anxious. I was having yeah. anxiety over all the things that I had to do. And I was, it was really, you know, impeding me, you know, yeah. like I wasn't sleeping well and I'm, I'm hundred percent on with that. So there we go. You just, this is why it's all about get it out here and, and work on it and do this reset. That's so, right. so look, there's two things to focus on here for this committing to your 2022. Number one, it's to commit to your goals and outcomes. And to do that, you got to write your goals. <laughs> you got to write your objectives, your outcomes, keep it simple, whatever it is. We have an, a complete you know, course on that, a free course that you can take, but do it in all areas, personal, financial, career, business, relationships, and spiritual, just write your goals for the year, but make a commitment to them. And we've just been sharing with you ideas of how to do that. It's, it's having that daily routine and so forth. And number two, commit to your personal and professional growth. So yeah. this is the, time of the year that I like to go, all right, what obviously complete and follow your business plan there. It goes without saying, and then what courses or events I'm always working on some things, listening to podcasts. So any books or podcasts that you want to listen to on, on an ongoing basis, but is there some kind of course or event or training? Do you want to go take some training from somewhere this year online or live in person? Uh, we have courses, but there's a ton of great, personal and professional development. I'm working on both. I'm, I've signed up in, in a couple courses. I'm continuing to learn how to do video better. I'm, I'm doing a personal, uh, a spiritual sort of development course right now, which I, I like getting back to. 
but I think that's important to identify and maybe uh, put that on your list as well. All right. And some final thoughts for an epic 2022 that are, that are helping me. These are the things I'm really uh, have set my goals and stuff around is to focus on listings, right? Listings, listings, listings. We're still in a very low inventory market. Mm -hmm. All the experts are saying it's going to continue on here and maybe into 2023 before we start seeing a little bit more inventory. So you got to focus on listings. That's, that's going to help you get more business and everything that you're doing in your marketing and all that ought to be around that. In my opinion, I am, I'm, I'm looking at my goal is 75% of the business coming from listings. Uh, so focus on listings, be the local market expert and leader. I mean, gosh, I just love that part. Yeah. I do it all the time. I'm always working on it. It gives you confidence. It shows up in everything that you're doing and but you have to put the work and effort into it. And, and uh, you know what? Can I say something about that? You, you do, you thrive in this zone of, uh, of your business, but you know what can really help you in this? And I think what really got you really turned on with this was let's go back to what we talk about all the time is that freaking monthly newsletter because you yes. have statistics in your monthly newsletter. Yep. You become the local market expert because you know what's happening in that real estate market. So, you know, this might be kind of daunting to look at or a great kind of uh, gen kind of uh, out there goal, but you can tie this directly to a lead generator that's going to do two things. It's going to generate leads and you're going to become the, the market leader. So that's a brilliant one. And you know what, Matt, based in th to your point, instead of passing on something that you might receive from somewhere, right? company, a title company, you know. You, when you have to go spend the hour to do the stats and put the presentation together, then record it in a video, you you start to really get it. You yeah. can turn around and say our average sales price has gone up ten thousand since last month. You know because you're doing the work, and it, it did develop a habit. You're one hundred percent right, Matt. It's one example of one simple thing that I did. I committed to it for our Vegas team. I'm going to expand this now because now we're going into micro areas because we're all we all have local market experts um, for different areas. And it's not that hard to do now. I'm doing it right now for Ve for uh, Vegas and for Florida, but it I love it, right? And now you do love it, and it's fun to talk to. I always know when you're doing the newsletter because you are you've got a little bit more pep in the step. Yeah, and it, and it can then parlay into just one on one confidence in talking to somebody. But when you now have a newsletter and you have a video and it's now out there. And it starts growing and growing month after month. It can help bring that credibility of how you are the local market expert. So the point it. is becoming an expert is daunting. is daunting. We just gave you the easiest path to becoming it. Is just do do the newsletter. 100%. And, and you're going to get business at the same time. <laughs> cool. And then, of course, you do better at staying connected to your database. I already shared uh, some ideas. We oh. share them all the time. It is easy to just, you know, do the monthly newsletter is the main one. And then uh, remember people, reach out to the people that you know for a birthday or an annual market analysis, maybe a client event. Keep it simple, but have some quality touches that you're doing um, to your database. I, I, I also forgot to mention in, in some previous videos that we've done, get back to it. I just talk to somebody about this, sending out just lists and just solds to your database is a really powerful way to let people know that you are busy, you know, you have listings so That's that right. you're in the real estate business, not just sending them a newsletter. Uh, choose your two to three lead pillars, right? So you're going to stay in touch with your database and you're going to choose another couple that you're hundred percent focused on for me, YouTube videos, YouTube videos and more. I'm also committed to listing marketing and listing marketing to me means Every time I take a listing, I'm holding open houses. I'm doing mailers around it and targeted mailers um, in my farms. OK, so I'm, I have two farms and the YouTube videos are, are tying into all of that. But my I want to do more video. So that that's that's my focus. And how do I choose to do something that's going to allow me to leverage video? Right. That's that's where my head's at. And then do the daily. I love do the daily. Right. I am uh, committed to the daily. It's your morning routine. It's uh, you maybe have an evening routine as well. Maybe you're, you do both, and and then it's making sure of everything else that happens on a daily basis. It's whatever, however you get the day started, and some type of lead generation or follow up daily. That's it. If you just did those things, I think personally, I'm going to prove it out this year. If I consistently just do that, do my morning routine, and do some type of lead generation, I believe I will have an epic 2022. Everything else will fall into place if I get those things done. So there it is. Let's talk about resources. We have resources. Let's recap our resources for you. There's some 
total free resources starting with my path 2022. I am integrating this. See, we have a thing called do the daily right and there. I absolutely love it. It's uh, designed on the way I was doing it for myself. And so now I'm um, putting those together in a little booklet, Matt, and that is my daily guide. Sweet. Or what my things are. And there's things like a tune up, a high level uh, look, you, know, you can get a list of your, who your people in your pipeline, all the things that you need at a finger. And I'm, I've decided to go back to this, this style of a book that I have. Okay. Used. Gotcha. Um, and it, it has an area where I can always refer to it. You can put it online as well. I'll have it up online, but I don't always have everything online. I like still having paper. So now, this is actually an Excel spreadsheet that you could load up to Google Drive if you wanted to and use it as a Google Sheet. And so you yep. can you know access this anywhere. You just figure out what's going to work the best for you, right? Exactly. So that that's to help you with, uh, you know, everything you need. We have a great branding checklist. This will help you with everything to to do a refresh on your brand and make sure you're you've looked at everything online from online to your you know your paper marketing pieces we have an epic checklist i i love this epic checklist it, this is designed for new agents it's designed for seasoned agents it's designed for agents who are maybe transitioning from one brokers to another and it's broken down into all the business systems but they're the first couple pages are have you done the basics do you have a voicemail do you have you know email all the way through uh, all the business systems that we coach and teach. I love and it's a nice system. little writable PDF. So if you don't want to print this out, you can just keep it on your computer. Yeah, it's in my book, right? And I've been, I've been checking it off and it's in this book and I'm checking off the things and it helps you get back to like Matt was talking a moment ago. Uh, I got a million things to do, but today I'm just doing this one thing. And that's what I do with all these systems. I, I pull out into the daily, do the daily. What's one thing I'm going to work on this week or today that I can get done. That way you're not overwhelmed. All right. And then you have progress. Um, get our free mini course. If you haven't done your business plan, it's never too late. Go get our free mini course, Agent Fundamentals. It's basically module one of our real estate sales builder program, which is, is our fundamental all-in-one powerful course designed for agents of any level. There's so much in there to help you just get everything on track, all your business systems in place this year so that you can truly have an epic 2022. Wouldn't that be nice? And you can find all of those resources, both free and our our, our regular paid courses over at WBNLcoaching.com because our goal Yay. is, as always, for you to line, connect, and prosper. Prosper. I want to exactly. prosper. I am prospering. I don't you are to. prospering, and it's a wonderful thing. I am prosperous. That is a wrap for episode 196 of the Wander But Not Lost WBNL podcast, where real estate and reality meet. All of our show notes are over at WBNLpodcast.com. So what else, Jenna, Brian? What, what did you what you end up doing for New Year's Eve? Stayed in, went to sleep early, celebrated early. Actually, I ended up waking up and seeing the, uh, uh, the stuff online, you know, switch between the channels and so forth. But it was right. very low key. I was with my sister and... Um, it was nice. There were there were the, the puppies were uh, freaking out because of course there were fireworks going. Fireworks, you're right. Yeah, we had we had a very uh, quiet New Year's Eve as well. We had China, we went out for Chinese. Actually, we went to PF Chang's this year for New Year's, which oh, was kind of different. We had an awesome time. That was really fun. Then we came home, had um, uh, we actually after after that we drove around, and looked at some Christmas lights and some houses, which was kind of fun. We got home around eight o'clock, so we. Popped open a bottle of champagne, watched the New York New Year, which to me is New Year. It, it, once it's once it's East Coast New Year's, I can go to bed here in the West Coast. I'm fine with that. But we didn't. We started playing games. Yeah. Normally we play Tripoli. This we played. We played Uno, and then we played freaking Clue. When's the last time you played Clue? Oh, okay. I was going to share a great gift that I got for uh, my sis was at Costco, and it was the nice deluxe version of monopoly oh. wooden on one side yep. and you flip it over and it's clue on the other side okay. oh that's awesome so, so do you guys play it did you play yeah we didn't play clue but we play monopoly a long version of monopoly but it was we did it um prior to new year's so that's anyway awesome. we have the whole game night stuff set up here for when they're down here in the clearwater area so me. it was funny because we had our had our little champagne toast you know at nine o'clock here on the west coast we played some games we played clue we were having a ball playing clue i don't know why we thought it was so damn much fun but it was so much fun all of a sudden 12 o'clock rolls around we opened another bottle of champagne, had that champagne. champagne. Now it was one really New Year's. One o'clock rolls around, two o'clock rolls around. We're playing games. Three o'clock rolls around, what? four o'clock rolls. We went to bed at 4.30 
on you, New Year's Day. No way. I never would have been able to do that, I don't think. So <laughs> where does yeah, so what does that do? That means New Year's Day was pretty much trash because <laughs> we were we didn't go to bed till 4 30. We out we didn't get up till the afternoon on New New Year's Day. We felt fine because we didn't do a lot of party and yeah, we had champagne a couple of times, but it was early yeah. on. Um, so we felt okay, but we were just tired as heck. When you get to be of a certain age, that yes. staying up to 4 30, mm, not so much. Not I don't think we felt normal until the second or maybe even the third. So yeah. it's been an interesting anyway. It was a blast. We had a great time. Awesome. I know you said my sister in law came down and we it was a lot of fun, quiet but fun. So that was Good. a nice way to ring in the new year. I appreciate it. It is, and now we're ready, and there you go. So go reflect and then reset and uh 2022. Best year ever, hashtag. That's, year ever. <laughs> That's right. We hope you had a great and happy and safe New Year's as well. And you know what? Beyond all that other stuff, just get out there in 2022 and be forever wandering, but not lost. <laughs>